Breaking news coverage here on ABC News Live. If you're just tuning in, this is what we can tell you right now. A settlement has been reached uh, with Dominion Voting Systems in that defamation case against Fox News. We just heard the announcement moments ago through the attorneys representing uh, Dominion Voting Systems. The network, we are told, will now pay more than $787 million to Dominion. Uh, that deal, which was apparently brokered right in the midst of the trial when it was about to begin we had been talking about opening statements uh, about to start and then apparently lawyers uh, as I'm looking at the notes here were seen uh, coming together within the courtroom talking with the judge uh, and then a settlement was made we don't have all the details with regard to the se settlement right now but our Aaron Katursky investigative correspondent here at ABC News has been following this from the very beginning um, Aaron it, it is astounding uh, that this happened the way that it did. I mean, we were predicting uh, a pretty uh, long uh, trial here with Fox executives yeah. and personalities, even members of the Murdoch family taking the stand. And then moments before everything is about to get started, the jury being seated, a settlement is made and a settlement for more than $787 million. It was a moment of high drama, Kira. Inside the courtroom, opening statements were about to begin. The jury had been sworn. They took a break for lunch. The judge wanted to do the opening statements uh, back to back. He didn't want to have a lunch break in between, so he sent the jury back for lunch. When everybody returned, we expected to hear first the judge and then those opening statements begin, and then nothing. There was an inexplicable delay that lasted almost two and a half hours before Judge Eric Davis took his place on the bench to announce that the parties had resolved their dispute. Two years after Dominion first accused Fox News in this lawsuit of recklessly spreading misinformation about the 2020 presidential election. And you're right, Kira, this trial was supposed to last six weeks. Uh, it was supposed to include testimony from some of the biggest names at Fox News, including hosts Tucker Carlson, Maria Bartiromo, uh, Sean Hannity and others. It was going to include testimony from Rupert Murdoch, the Fox boss at 92 years old, who was going to be summoned here to testify about why, according to Dominion, he did nothing to, to stop Fox News from reporting claims that behind the scenes, his emails showed he knew to be questionable. And he even conceded during a deposition that he could have put a stop to it and did not. None of that is going to be aired publicly. Instead, we get word of this $787.5 million settlement, short of the $1.6 billion Dominion was seeking, Kira, uh, but still an awful lot of money. Uh, indeed. And and Fox not giving an apology, as, as we can see here by the statement that they did uh, put out. They actually said, we are pleased to have reached a settlement of our dispute with Dominion Voting Systems. We acknowledge the court's rulings, finding certain claims about Dominion to be false. This settlement reflects Fox's continued commitment to the highest journalistic standards. We are hopeful that our decision to resolve this dispute with Dominion amicably instead of the acrimony of a divisive trial allows the country to move forward from these issues. It's interesting to note that, you know, Dominion would have had to convince the jury that people at Fox acted with actual malice, right? And then the judge, from what I'm seeing, had already rejected several First Amendment defenses that Fox hoped to invoke here, and, and that he actually further constrained Fox uh, in, a, in a number of pretrial rulings last week. So it's interesting to start to get these behind the scenes details, Aaron, uh, to see to what led to this. It really was a hamstrung defense because the judge not only said that everything Fox News aired about Dominion was false, uh, he had also said that they could not argue that they were merely repeating allegations made by others. Fox News said that it was simply reporting on the newsworthy claims of former President Trump, and they had gone back to the judge even after he ruled against them to ask one more time if they could please tell the jury that their hosts could not have been held liable for saying things that former President Trump and his allies had said first. The judge seemingly rejected that argument out of hand, and so we weren't sure what the defense was necessarily going to look like. Uh, and at the 11th hour here comes that $787.5 million settlement.
And John Polis, the head of uh, Dominion Voting Systems, the CEO, Aaron, with some, I mean, he came right out of the box saying Fox has admitted to telling lies. Basically, one of the, those were the first words out of his mouth saying that the truth had to come out, that Fox knowingly spread lies, and that they've been held accountable. And you have, you, you tend to wonder, I mean, how this is going to impact the network going forward. Well, uh, Fox News, you saw the statement says that they're still committed to the highest journalistic standards and uh, hope that the settlement would help the country move on from these allegations, this amicable resolution rather than the acrimony of a trial, as the Fox statement put it. But look, this was not going to be easy for Dominion either. You've, uh, you've talked, Kira, about the high bar uh, of proving actual malice, that reckless disregard for, for, for the truth that, that is the standard. Uh, Dominion believes that they could have done it and, and that the, the, the evidence was on their side. Uh, but they, they would have had to show that, that even despite these text messages and some of the doubt that was expressed behind the scenes, that they, they had to be uh, clear and sure that what uh, get their guests were saying on the air and, and what some of their hosts were saying on the air couldn't have been true when the highest official in the country at the time, then President Trump, was making those very allegations himself. Aaron, thank you so much. I want to bring in Catherine Ross, constitutional law professor at George Washington University. Catherine, we were talking today uh, about how we were in for the long haul here and how it was going to be interesting to watch this trial and, and hear both sides and how uh, each side would defend what was what was happening here with regard to to these allegations and and in the, in the moment, just moments before opening statements, a settlement is made. So I guess, first of all, your your reaction, because you did say earlier on that this was, was huge. I mean, an extraordinary situation, not just for Fox, but also the First Amendment. I didn't expect to see you quite so soon again, Kira. I'm glad to be back. Um, yes, um, this is an extraordinary development in an extraordinary case. Settlements are not unusual at the last minute. Um, the dollar amount is large, but the First Amendment issues remain largely unresolved. We don't know yet whether Dominion was able to extract a, uh, a significant promise to uh, retract and to repeat its apologies and to acknowledge its fault. The initial statement, as you mentioned, uh, that they made right after the settlement, saying we acknowledge that the judge said this was false, is very different from saying we, all they're saying is the judge said this. They're not saying we did something wrong. Uh, and the amount of money for a place like Fox is uh, not necessarily enough to really hurt. And that's the point of punitive damages. Uh, after you've made the person who was defamed whole, you want to hurt the liar so that other people learn they shouldn't do this. So from a First Amendment point of view, what we were hoping to get guidance on from this case is the meaning of actual malice. And I have repeatedly said that if these facts did not establish actual malice, then nothing could. And so I was really hoping to see a bright line that would be a warning to journalists and to media that this is a line you cannot cross. You have an awful lot of leeway. But at a certain point where we have evidence, assuming that had that case was substantiated in court from the leaks we've seen, you have evidence that they knew in real time that what they were publishing was not true that you just cannot go that far, even in the interests of robust and uninhibited debate, and even if you're the press. Um, so now we're uh, going to leave that question unresolved. We've never seen a set of facts like this that one could say, if that isn't actual malice, I don't know what is. And we're going now not just down the First Amendment doctrine road, but also into the next election cycle without a clear set of lines um, that, you know, at where the press can be found culpable for spreading falsehoods when they know that's exactly what they're doing. So with that said then, because that's a little scary if you think about it, 
we should know where the lines are as journalists, right? We are supposed to be Absolutely. right right down the middle, right? This this is the truth. These are the facts. Uh, and, and as we well know, um, there are personalities on Fox News. And you and I talked about the difference between who are opinionated or who have opinions. I mean, we, we really are going down a fine line here. So I guess from as a constitutional lawyer, what do you make of this? Do you think Fox actually got by pretty pretty well here, paying a bunch of money? They're a big money corporation because they're still not, as you said, a, def a, a definite fine line of, of where they need to stay. I mean, from what I'm hearing, they still will be able to take risks or go beyond that line and do their shows the way they want to do their shows and pump the kind of information they want to pump. From what we've seen so far, you're right. Fox has some wiggle room and other, um, other media outlets that are not holding themselves to the highest standards continue to have some wiggle room. I, I will say um, I, I'm waiting to see whether Dominion was able to extract the kind of admissions and the promise to make those admissions public that we might hope for. On the other hand, Dominion is a business. It's owned by private equity, and it did not have an obligation to our society or our constitution or the rest of us to make this into a battle over the limits of First Amendment speech. And so while this would have been a good case in which to see some lines drawn, and there are very few cases in which I think the actual malice standard can be met, and in fact, very few cases, almost none, in which it has been met, which is why we see so few of these defamation lawsuits. Um, but as a First Amendment uh, scholar and advocate, it would have been nice to see this play out. But that's a theoretical thing. And again, it was not Dominion's job. We can't expect Dominion to do that at its own expense on our behalf. So how do we resolve these issues? I don't know. I'd like to get your reaction to John Polis. He's the CEO of Dominion Voting Systems. Uh, he spoke just moments ago. Let's roll what he had to say. Once the settlement was made, I'd like to get your feedback. Fox and Dominion have reached an, an historic settlement. Fox has admitted to telling lies about Dominion that caused enormous damage to my company, our employees, and the customers that we serve. Nothing can ever make up for that. Throughout this process, we have sought accountability and believe the evidence brought to light through this case underscores the consequences of spreading lies. Truthful reporting in the media is essential to our democracy. Dominion, our employees, our people, our partners are grateful to the court for allowing us the process for the truth to come out. I cannot thank the election officials that we serve enough. Without them, there is no democracy. And the work they tirelessly do to that end, and they deserve much better. We are grateful for all the support we have received, grateful to our legal team, and want to acknowledge Staple Street Capital, who have been unconditional in their support of Dominion and our customers. So, Catherine, John Paul is saying there, Fox has admitted to telling lies. Did Fox admit to telling lies? Not from what I've heard so far. Uh, but I will say that it was a powerful statement by Mr. Polos and one that reminded us of why the stakes are so high here. Catherine Ross, appreciate your feedback and just being with us throughout the day and, of course, for the breaking news coverage. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.